three, two, one. Welcome everyone to POV Crypto, the only podcast that both Bitcoiners and Ethereans listen to. I'm David Hoffman, here with my buddy Christian. Christian, how you doing? Doing fantastic, man. It's been a long and busy day per usual, but excited to be doing a quick fight night here with you. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long overdue since we've had a fight night, which is actually kind of a shame because there's definitely been a number of subjects that we have let come and go through our Twitter that we that we hopefully remember, but I currently don't remember right now. That's what Twitter is for. It's there forever. Um, guys, if you don't follow us on Twitter, you're missing out on all of the arguing that happens in between fight nights and POV crypto episodes. So make sure to follow at Trustless States and CK underscore Snarks. We come off really friendly on our podcast and we come off really mean on Twitter. So it keeps things really entertaining. There's no nuance in Twitter. It's just like, (laughs) you're dumb. You're wrong. You don't get it. You don't get it. We're leaving you behind. (laughs) Including Bitcoiners love to fucking uh, tweet at you, dude. You've done a successful job of like attracting all the Bitcoiners who just want to shit on an ETH head. Yeah. Who's the latest one? Grubles. Oh yeah, who is he? He's, God, he's just a classic Bitcoiner, right? Like, oh, and Fura is gonna take down Ethereum and Crypto Kitties clog the network, and no one can run a node. Just like, like there are three things that I you can quickly identify a Bitcoiner who's just plainly shitting on Ethereum without having any sort of mind of their own. One is you can't run your own node. Two is Infura is controlling the network. And three, uh, the EF or consensus, take your pick, is also controlling the network. Like one of those, when it's like 99% of, of uh, criticism towards Ethereum and like all of it is just wrong. Just wrong, no. <laughs> like if you haven't had the time to research it, then you're not paying attention. I don't know if it's 100% wrong, it's wrong. but we'll see how it's important wrong. it is. I think I said, that I there's- said 99%, right? Or did I say 100 <laughs> I, think uh, I I don't like how Ethereum as a community and as an organization is structured and their attempts to scale and upgrade moving forward. And that is a nuanced subject. But that doesn't have anything to do with how consensus or the EF controls Ethereum. Maybe they don't control it like kings, but they have a very strong say in how things shake out. Yeah, because that's because like the distributed uh, set of um, developers that are working on Ethereum 2 are getting paid by them, but that doesn't mean that they actually control the direction. Wait, do, we, do you have yours in gallery view? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Because yeah. I want to make sure they see my yeah. face when you say uh-huh. that. All right. <laughs> So like you guys you watch us on YouTube, you just get so much extra context too. So your face just then was about how like, oh well, if they pay them, then they get to have what they want, right? Because they're the, follow the money, bro. How, follow the money, right? But the whole point, like the difference is, the whole point of the EF is to become a smaller organization. Like they're designed to deplete over time. And then okay, then the Bitcoin argument is like, well, well, you know, that's that's just not how it works. They're gonna they're gonna find a way to stick around so they can keep on making money. No. We have this new system, this new blockchain system, and we have this mandate in the EF to not ex- specifically not do that. And so the whole point of the EF is to deplete itself and be, have a reductionist policy, which is what they have been doing. And so actually what's ha- really cool has happened lately um, is that the EF has donated, I don't know how much it was, but it was like a significant amount of money. I think it was like $10 million to Gitcoin grants. And so you can go to Gitcoin, which is just this system that uh, gives out Ether or DAI or other tokens to projects that you can fund yourself. And they're doing this thing called CLR grant matching. I can't remember what CLR stands for, but it's kind of like uh, quadratic matching, except the way that this works is that um, say 10 people, it's, it's a matching system. So if you uh, donate, you get matched, but it doesn't happen linearly. So if you donate like $1, you aren't getting matched by $1. It goes through a little bit of an algorithm. And the way that this algorithm works is that um, if one person donates $10 to one particular project, then they get matched some amount. 
But if 10 people donate $1 to a different project, then they get matched exponentially more. And so it's a way of matching um, individual contributions, like unique person contributions, rather than just like matching whales. So if, if like one whale comes and donates $1 million, then they're not going to get matched that much. But if like uh, 10,000 people donate uh, you know, math, like $1,000, then they're all going to get matched a lot more just because of how that's how the, the people want to say. And so the EF took a significant amount of their funds and they donated, donated it to Gitcoin. So it's basically the people allowing it's, it's the ef allowing the people to control where their funds are going and so can that you is talk about specific example. can you talk about specific numbers because spe you know like let's talk percentages sure. because you know sure. you could throw up a big up. number and that could still be nothing in terms of the, the whole pie uh so i think the ef has like 60 million dollars and then they they gave how much bitcoin out. do they have I, I have no idea i have no idea probably a lot uh, when i zoom away from swipe away from this window it takes a long time uh okay <laughs> so while you're doing this let's let's talk about what you have planned for pov crypto david oh uh, you're gonna ask me to do two things at once Hold on. Okay. Let, let's we'll let's wait. just pause, and we're gonna we're gonna cut this out, and I'm gonna find. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's taking forever. Find 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 the right information. <laughs> oh, so this is the third round. Yeah, this has happened. God, the Gitcoin site is so annoying. Okay. The EF should uh, fund it some more so they could fix their site. Okay. Wow, this is taking forever to make an eToro account. Come on. Okay, I'm not going to be able to find out this information quickly, but in this particular last round, uh, it was, I don't know. I don't know. In this particular last round, it looked like it was like $200,000. Somebody has this announcement somewhere. Eric Connell. Okay, know. we're going to have Eric, to dig this up. answer my question. <laughs> also, Eric, when are you coming on the podcast? Are you scared of me? <laughs> I don't bite. <laughs> Uh, we'll see if he listens to this particular episode. I don't. I don't think he listens to every single one. No, only probably only the Ethereum stuff. <laughs> Can't burst your bubble if you just stay in there. I think he likes. I think he likes it. <laughs> he, he he needs to subscribe. Yeah, uh -huh. listen to every show, bro. Same with you, Crypto Dad. I expect you to listen to every show from here on out. Uh, yeah, Travis. Travis should be listening. He'll be listening to this one. He admitted on the internet that he, he hasn't listened to our most recent shows. Can you believe it? Well, he was busy uh, getting me on stage at Tel Aviv, Israel, so I'm going to give him a pass. All right, Travis, just this one time. Put me on stage on to, at, at Tel Aviv. Absolutely I'll burst some bubbles. Not. I'll burst some bubbles. <laughs> no Let's <way>. go. <laughs> you are not allowed. <laughs> okay, so I are we you ready guys, for now? I thought you guys were anti-echo chamber, huh? Is it just me? Yeah. Not ethereal. Ethereal is just going to be about Ethereum. There's, if we hosted so you an anti-echo an chamber, echo chamber? <laughs> no, if we wanted to, if, if you and I wanted to get together and make an anti-echo chamber based event, there would be two people that would go and it would be you and me. No one would want <laughs> to go to that. <laughs> Everyone Fuck, loves guys. their tribe. Is the point of well, the, the thing is, is that... We would have very strict criteria for our anti echo chamber event. It'd be like, what would that criteria be? I mean, obviously, no EOS, no Tron, <laughs> no <laughs> Ripple, none of this shit. Like, it would be like, it's obviously kind of just like a oh, more slightly enlarged echo chamber. It's like the ETH mm -hmm. and Bitcoin echo chamber that are allowed to be there. 
We say your blockchain must take in at least like fifty thousand dollars in fees to participate. <laughs> oh, that's there's two of them. I mean, my kind of event is a Bitcoin event, and then just throw David in there just to make things interesting. <laughs> me, me and my maker Dow shirt. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. So before we got carried away on this little tangent, um, mm-hmm. David was talking about how the EF is trying to have really unbiased ways of divvying up money and you know getting it into the hands of the people that need it who are going to build on eth and i'm i mean even if they could do it fairly i'm just still extremely apathetic um like are are these projects even viable in the market and does anyone actually want them on gitcoin i don't know i don't know i kind of like the vicious uh the kind of vicious tests of the market to finance something and for something to be at least productive um for it to even be viable so like i don't like in academia grant systems and all that kind of baloney and i'm kind of skeptical of them here and you could go say like okay well bitcoin devs don't get funded either and like yeah well it's hard for them to get funding they literally have to scrap and i think that the fact that they won't get funding and that they still do it is what makes the code so damn powerful and when they do get funding like it's on the right terms it's not um it's not with any strings attached or whatever, whatever. It's, it's market-driven funding. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. That, that's just my mental model and why I'm just not I, – I, I don't see a whole lot of signal. And I know you said earlier that I don't get it, but, you know, that's just me. Right. So th- w- this is something that we also want, but it's not what we want right now uh, because we need to learn – we were in a learning phase. And so this is where we get to subsidize our activities and like provide little cushions for people to experiment with. And it's not something that is supposed to be perpetual into the future. And it can't be perpetual into the future anyways, because the EF has Ether and Bitcoin as their funds. Not, I don't think they have any Bitcoin. I think they traded it all for Ether. And so they have this hard asset. You, sure? you should figure no. that out. No, I don't. That seems like some pretty important information given your and, strong opinions about the EF. Not really, because it's just about like the point about the important thing about the EF is that they are getting smaller and their funds are going away over time. If they said like, okay, I don't think so at all. I think, I think most likely if E succeeds, they will last forever and they will be a massive institution with a large amount of Ethereum. Even if they spend 90% of it now, that 10% they hold on to will be very significant. So that just doesn't make sense to me unless they make it a mandate to spend every cent of it, which I don't think that they will, or they could do it in time. If they're okay, well, their their mandate in is to be a a subtraction based entity. That's the word that they use, subtraction based. They don't they want to get smaller, and so that's why that's their, why they used Gitcoin to not hire a manager, but instead just use Gitcoin to allocate funds, right? And so like that that is something that they have mandated, saying we are going to get smaller. Um, and so rather than, rather than hiring people to, to figure out how to manage the funds, they've pushed it out to the community to figure out how to do that, like hired contractors rather than hired an employee, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So like, I mean, I, like, and I totally all respect the things it. that Bitcoiners would in theory want, except, That's what except you assume. That funding on Ethereum, except it's not what they want. And so going back to like all these like market driven innovations, like Uniswap, for example, everyone's favorite protocol, and it didn't take any funding when it was built. Hayden just built it. And so what, what uh, the EF is doing is saying, all right, Hayden, we want you to keep doing whatever you're doing. Here's money to do it. They don't even give him any restrictions or whatever on the money. They he could go buy fucking strippers and Coke with it. Like they're not giving him any rules. They're, so giving he, a bear, they're just giving him the bare asset. Boom, right. here you go. Giving, here's, the, here's, the, here's the money. Here's the die. Mm-hmm. Here's the ETH. Um, and so he, and then he gets to hire a team and, and directs the team. And so like, maybe there's like, they're not profit because the whole point of, of Uniswap is to not take profit as a company because they want, want to give all the profits to the people that supply liquidity. Therefore, if we want to continue the development and, and, uh, perfection of this application, let's pay the money now. And then when we run out of money that's when they'll need to either figure out how to monetize on their own as services around Uniswap, which is something that like Compound is doing or a bunch of other companies do, uh, like Instadap. That's what Instadap does. Um, 
or they could just leave it and let it go. Yeah, they have to build the uni the Uniswap protocol, right? Mm -hmm. And then hopefully there is a, a flourishing ecosystem of viable businesses that will uphold mm -hmm. that protocol and continue to use mm -hmm. it, correct? Right. Yep. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We will see. So like the, the business model for Uniswap, and this is something that Alex on our recent podcast couldn't get. Like the business model for Uniswap is to pay liquidity providers, not Uniswap. The, if Uniswap succeeds when it transfers a bunch of fees and, and, and market, market exchange fees to the liquidity providers, not to Uniswap. I mean, I think what he was trying to say is that he does not know if that is optimal. Like, I don't know. It's just like, where should a protocol end and when should a business take an operation? I think that uh, people that tend to prefer Bitcoin, they would say that the protocol should just create the monetary unit and everything else should kind of go towards, you know, other applications that get built on top of it. Um, people in ETH, they want to build protocols on protocols. Um, I mean, again, like Lightning is another protocol on the Bitcoin blockchain. Just like which protocols and which protocol should do what and what should a protocol do? And, you know, what, what activity is vertical or horizontal enough uh, to require a protocol to be effective? Like these are very, very hard answers to answer or questions to answer. Like, you know, is it right for Uniswap to be doing this or is it way more efficient for private businesses to use it, to do it on a decentralized money? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll see. That's why the, the differs in our thesis. Um, one more thing well, before I get to you is that okay. I think another prerequisite to what uh, Alex and I were arguing on the previous podcast were that uh, we have a lot of issues with the base layer under Uniswap as well. So even if we thought a, you know, protocol should do what Uniswap does, um, I think there are, uh, there are, I guess, reservations about the underlying asset as well. Right. And I don't think I'm ever going to be able to convince you otherwise of the underlying asset until Ethereum 2.0 comes around and then that settles in and gets its own Lindy. Um, so I'm just going to sit and wait on that one in response to your, to your first point, which is do these protocols need to operate in that, that non-business model way? Do they need to be like actual protocols rather than businesses? Do they need to be fully autonomous? The answer is no, they, they don't need to be that they can. That's, and that's the beauty of Ethereum. They can be anything they want to be. It's just the cool stuff that we weren't able to do before are the protocols. Like we can have traditional business models like Spank Chain, traditional business model. It's a company, takes fees for the service. It's a porn site, like campsite, whatever. Like that's not new. The new thing that they're doing is they're doing it on crypto. And it's all the traditional business models that like, and we're like realty, fractionalized real estate, not new. The way that it's new is that we use the Ethereum ledger to manage our assets. But it's the, it's the non-new stuff that gets everyone excited. That's why Ethereum's all about like, oh, DeFi, DeFi, DeFi is because DeFi wasn't possible before. And so that's why all these applications that are trying to become protocols are the things that excite us. But the magic of Ethereum is that you can do whatever you want. You can have any hybrid protocol slash traditional business model, 90% protocol, 10% business model, 90% like old business, whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. It's just that we are currently in this phase where like we are realizing the potential of a significant amount of protocol only applications. And that's what we call DeFi. And that's what we're all rallying behind. And that's what we're uh, donating our money to, to help build it out. It's really funny to kind of like, there's this, like, I feel like Ethereum hasn't quite graduated beyond this idea of community. And I don't even think people in Ethereum want to like their idea is like, well, let's just scale community up to everyone, uh, which I find quite interesting. And I think that's evident in like the attitude of the community. Like we have to fund these things. We have to be this unified group of people. We have to work together to do these things in cooperation. And, and again, I just have massive reservations that that can scale or will scale. And uh, what Bitcoin is saying just makes a lot more sense to me. Like let's create something that no matter if you agree or not, Bitcoin is for enemies. You know, it's, it's just this constant thing that is the one thing that you can agree on. And let's see what happens there.
And I think that that opens massive doors. And I'm not as eloquent as you, but just because I'm not as eloquent doesn't mean what I'm saying is not 100% true. And that is that Bitcoin already was at zero to one. So whatever ETH is doing is the, the one to two or whatever, it just matters so, so much less. It's an interesting metaphor. So you're saying like, because, right, because it, it, Bitcoin built the blockchain and, and that, that in first instantiation of the blockchain, blockchain is the valuable thing. And then like whatever new, new uses of blockchains that are also legit like Ethereum are not going to be as valuable because Bitcoin was the first instantiation of it. I mean, again, like you could question, like, again, I'm not even saying that, that ETH is, is going to make it. I'm skeptical about that in general, but um, what I'm trying to say is that when, Z when Bitcoin went from zero to one, like that was the change. Programmable money happened at that point. You could have a multi-sig where the money won't move unless you have those signatures in. That right there already changed the situation when it comes to any sort of um, custody or trust in the asset. The money could move in a bare way. It's completely censorship resistant. It's distributed. And more, most importantly, from an investment perspective, it's extremely hard and finite. Um, so anything after that, like you just have to do so much more to surplant what Bitcoin is right now and where it is you know, kind of in this economy. And that's why you say like, where's ETH2 going to be? But like at the same time, where, like, where's Bitcoin going to be? Like ETH2 is not in this bubble. It, like what the fuck are you expecting Bitcoin to be in five years? If it's where it is right now in 10 years, like imagine the next five years before ETH2 is completely ready. I don't know. It's just like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to trigger people too much. I'm just trying to explain my thoughts. So Peter Thiel's thesis is that if you want your product to succeed, coincidentally, the, also the guy that made zero to one, if you, if you want your uh, product to succeed, it needs to be a 10 X improvement upon the first product. And so like a multi sig is cool, right? Like, okay, three of five, you know, five of seven, whatever. But like on Ethereum, you can set arbitrary rules as you see fit. Like I want to never be able to send more than 3% of my total value to anyone other than these particular addresses. And I don't want it to happen on Sundays and Tuesdays because I get to dictate that. Like you can program whatever you want. And so like, to me, a three of five multi-sig is a one and a programmable personal bank account that also has stable assets inside of it is a, is a 10 X improvement on that. And so that's why, I, that's why I believe the power on Ethereum. You're muted. That's just, that. That's assuming that any of those things are actually real, or like actually live up to that story that you're saying. It's literally a prod, uh, product called Argent Wallet, which I have my funds in. I mean, so again, like these things are available right now on Ethereum, but are they going to be? Is Ethereum going to make it for another ten years? Right? Are yeah, these products going to make it? Escape, escape velocity, dude. It's already. But you're trying to replace it. You're trying to replace, like, I, I personally would be more bullish on ETH mm -hmm. if you guys were just committed to ETH1 and we're just going to continue to build on that. But the fact that you are trying to coordinate to get onto something else, like, that is a huge area where it's like, whatever happened, the Lindy is going to change. I mean, yeah, uh, the yes and no, uh, because Ethereum as the entity carries through that transition like ethereum isn't just is the that? blockchain it, what? so what what's that transition like what is the entity what do you mean is that the community so the community the the development community the motivation and value of ether like the value of ether is actually a good point like the value of ether will persist regardless of whether the transition happens or not like and plus like the if the, say like the transition mean? fails like well hey we don't, we don't even know but but part of it is that there's not one day where like okay ethereum will transition on this particular day we're building a bridge can you hear them in the background a little bit should i move it's okay just can, can, keep going okay. the the ethereum bridge is going to be a multi-year long process there won't ever be one transition Right. So like, it's not ever going to be like, oh, and it failed. Like, like no, we do it until it succeeds. And again, where the fuck is Bitcoin going to be? Like, I feel like 
like this assumption of like you you don't have all, any of this time you don't have this time to transition to a new layer like shit is happening we, we, we will take as much time as we need again like and because it's we're building something else like bitcoin can do whatever it's going to do it's not important to ethereum ethereum is doing something else is, is that what your investment thesis is uh hinged on yes okay you're building wrecked. out an <laughs> internet native economy that Bitcoin cannot participate in. It doesn't happen on the not blockchain. Invited. It's not real, guys. You're not invited. It is real. I use it every day. No, I'm saying if it's not happening on the blockchain, it's not real. So apparently if it's not happening on the ETH blockchain, whatever activity happened didn't fucking happen. Wait, what is that in reference to? I don't get it. I'm just teasing you because you have arbitrary, uh, you have very, very arbitrary definitions of what is a separate economy. Right. It's an internet-based economy. Yeah. I mean, Bitcoin completely enables that. No. No. It redefines what the traditional economy is. It's not internet-native. Uh, wait. It redefines it as Ethereum-native. You, Ethereum is not the internet. Just because it's Ethereum-native I mean, doesn't mean it's... The, it could be. But the point is, like, it is luck. an economy <laughs> that exists exclusively on the internet, whereas Bitcoin has one foot on both camps. It uses the internet. Way bigger market. Sure, sure. For now. For now. Like that's the point of Ethereum is we think that when we combine all of the markets of the world, you create something way better. And so when personal finance and company finance and like institution finance all exist natively on Ethereum, not just holding Bitcoin, but like storing their DAI or USDC or whatever and getting an interest rate and doing streaming money and all this other sorts of things that we do and exchanging through exchanging. When all of that happens collectively in one place, that's really big. What's and wrong Bitcoin with holding Bitcoin? Exist and it will be somewhere else. It will be doing other things. No, I'm pretty sure it'll be on Ethereum too if ETH actually matters. Okay, and if Bitcoin comes to Ethereum, it has to use the Ether, Ether as the reserve asset to trustlessly come to Ethereum. So it has Well, that's to why I said if Ether matters, then Bitcoin will probably be there. Right. But Bitcoin, in order to be there, will have to use Ether as a reserve asset because there's no other way to get Bitcoin on Ethereum trustlessly. So every so like if you're talking about TBTC, if you want now or Bitcoin, later when ETH is successful. What do you mean? I mean, like maybe now it's not possible, but maybe later it will be. Who knows? No, unless you guys fork to change your opcodes, unless Bitcoin forks to change its opcodes, it's not coming on trustlessly. I mean, people are the. the I'm actually really excited. I'm going to get Mike Schmidt on this podcast to talk about what the future of Bitcoin looks like. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a massive misunderstanding on what is going to be possible in Bitcoin in the future. And the strategy and kind of methodology behind Bitcoin development is very different from other protocols. Uh, really what they're trying to do is how do we make things more efficient to fit within the predefined consensus rules, right? So it's not about like, we need to do this thing and we need to change everything to make it happen. And we have to coordinate everyone around making that change so that way we can do this thing, right? It's about everyone, they have these predefined rules and they can do whatever the fuck they want with it as long as they stay within those rules. And saying that something is not possible on Bitcoin is saying that it is possible for humans to figure out how to make something happen within Bitcoin's rules. So if that is your investment thesis on what is possible, then I, I just think you're fucked. Like Bitcoin has so much Lindy in this money situation. And then on top of that, we have all of these people that are financially invested in making it do things that they want it to do. Um, that is going to have some really fantastic results. And I think that people are grossly misunderestimating what is possible because uh, there are very conservative and predefined uh, kind of guidelines and limitations around what is in consensus. Okay. I have nothing to add. Are you going to make a token or what? Yeah, we're going to make a fucking token. Moving on to a new subject. Uh, we're going to release POV crypto token. Call it. It's going to have the ticker POV. There will be 69 of them. And it will do absolutely nothing except for sit in Uniswap. So that's the announcement. It's been announced. I'm sad that I said, are we going to make it? Because I have nothing to do with this. This is 100%, David. You're going to be a co-owner of the POV token. Yeah, I better get my airdrop, but this is all David, guys.
No, it's going to stay in the uh, podcast funds. Well, because the podcast is going to have to supply it to Uniswap, or otherwise people won't be able to get their hands on it. So we're going to so we're going to hand some out to uh, some past guests, uh, some some here, some there, uh, and then we're going to stick like I don't know, thirty of them in Uniswap, thirty five. I don't know. We'll figure it out. How do we make but sure th- that this is not a security? It's not a security. How do we make sure? Well, it's not. Don't buy it because it's not going to go up in value. Or it might, but it's not. It won't go. It won't go up in value because of the labor of Christian and me. We're not. We're not paying people anything. We're just releasing the token. No, right, we're guys. not. We're our, our re- the revenue from POV crypto is not going to the POV token. It's just a token. Nothing is going towards the token. I'm, I'm not even going to look at the token. Yeah, we, I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist and forget that I said this and put it on the internet. I'm going to. I'm going to back it with my own ether, as in Uniswap because you have to, to to do that for Uniswap to work. And so it's going to be worth six. Each token is going to be worth six dollars and ninety cents, and there's going to be sixty nine of them. And uh, maybe when we hand them out to previous guests and stuff, they dump on it. Um, maybe users and listeners of the podcast feel that they would like a POV token in their Ethereum wallet. So they'll go and buy one. Um, anything could happen. You could go in any direction, <laughs> but it will we, not be we should, receiving. We should every use the, the podcast ETH. We haven't, we haven't liquidated it to buy mics or anything. We might as well just do it for this. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we end up getting dumped on. I hope we do. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Dump on this. We'll I figure want out all 69. Uh-huh. That can be a POV whale. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What could we do with it though? Stacking if, pop. If, if, what if we wanted to turn this into a security? What could we do? Go to jail. <laughs> Other than that, that's, but what would we do before we went to jail? <laughs> well, first we would have to not, if we wanted it to, to not be a security, we would just not say that we're going to do things uh, that would increase its value, but then actually do that. And it would just be like the wink, wink. This is kind of like the Monero thing. Is. The what? There's like the fluffy pony Monero thing. It's like Monero, don't use Monero. It's only used for drugs. Yes, mm. it's completely private. You don't want that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This token's completely worthless. Mm-hmm. I'm ashamed maybe, of it in every way. Yeah. Maybe we'll, if somebody wants to come onto the podcast, they can burn it and then they get one free episode. <laughs> Except then there's, then there's only 68. So that's not cool. So now it's a utility token. I prefer a piece of shit. Utility tokens like don't nothing. exist. You, I, I hate that term, utility token. Utility security token, that whole like spectrum just came out of the 2017, 2018 ICO bubble because like lawyers need to say like, okay, your token's not a security, it's a utility token. Utility to- tokens, the only t- utility token I've ever heard of is wires. Uh, when you uh, KYC an Ethereum address with them, they send you a ERC-721 to register your address with them saying, okay, we've KYC this address. We can send money to this address. That's a utility token. A utility token, like basic attention token, that's not a utility token. That's a, that's a shitty payment token. It's something else. And so I was actually the tweeting tweet about thread that you guys more. were talking about, you and Alex. It was oh, like the story wait. of every uh, <laughs> blockchain company. Uh... Wait, okay, now here, I'll, t- I'll, tell it, I'll tell it. So this is how it goes. The story of every blockchain company. Man th- or person oh, yeah, thinks yeah, of yeah. blockchain use case, creates a blockchain and a token that mm. actually becomes money isn't, and then is right. in free market competition with Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. So actually, this does bring up a subject matter that I would like to talk about because I, was, I, was, I went off on Bancor last night. Um, so yeah, the, the- You are the Bitcoin the, Maximus of ETH heads. Do you realize right. that? Yeah. That's why I'm so confident that you guys are coming to us one day and, and not vice versa. <laughs> you don't um, think that you're going to come to us? I've, I've taken my steps, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who was I arguing with? Hold on. Um, Nate Hindman, who does uh, growth, growth for Bancor. Um, I think I probably saw him in Tel Aviv. Um, so on this one uh, Twitter account, DeFi Prime, uh, he retweets the Bancor announcement of how they are going to make a USDB, a US dollar uh, stablecoin backed by the Bancor token. 
uh, and DeFi Prime asked, do we, need, do we really need one more stable coin? And then I re responded, we don't even need Bancor. Um, and then this guy, Nate, who does growth at Bancor comes in and talks and defends Bancor basically and says, your trolling highlights one of the biggest challenges holding crypto back, constant hate and factionalism. Instead of collecti collectively building and driving adoption, we are not your enemy traditional finances. And so I, this triggers me and I go fucking off on him. Uh, and I go, your anti-factionalism stance, in my opinion, is a cover-up to disguise how Bancor violated, violated economic principles to justify a $150 million ICO to do what Hayden Adams did in his spare time. Um, let's see, what else did I say? Um, was 2017 David into Bancor? Was what? Was 2017 David into Bancor? No, I never had any Bancor token. Um, and then, okay, so here's what I follow up with. The reason why Bancor gets pushed back from the Ethereum community is because it fired the first shot. By doing a $150 million token sale for a token that doesn't need to exist, that could have been returning back to the value of Ether, but instead lined Bancor's pockets. Um, this goes back to the purpose and role of the BNT token. BNT is trying to supplant Ether in Uniswap with its own version of Uniswap Bancor but instead of ETH, it used BNT. And then they're doing the stablecoin, also backed by BNT, trying to compete with MakerDAO using ETH to back DAI. And so like, I, got, I asked him, what's next on the Bancor roadmap? BNT settled Augur project, BNT collateralized synthetics, and EIP to enable BNT staking in Ethereum 2.0. Uh, yeah, and then I go, uh, after that, rip Bancor, and I show the, the terrible price performance of Bancor, which I will show right here. It's a downward, downward arrow. So yeah, I against just Bitcoin or ETH? Uh, all of them. US dollar, Bitcoin, ETH. <sighs> yeah. You ripped a scammer so, out of like, your butthole. Congratulations. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, One yeah, step I don't closer to Bitcoin maximalism, you toxic bastard. Yeah. No, except Ethereum maximalism is what we're all, we're all converging on. Except no. You get to be your Bitcoin maxi, and I'm going to be my ETH maxi because they're both legitimate. But what is not legitimate is Bancor maxi. Uh, the other thing I was pretty proud of, it was like, yo, Nate, uh, was that his name, Nate? Um, I think I find it super ironic that Bancor named itself Bancor after the failed adoption uh, that was proposed by uh, John Meaner Keys in, in Bretton Woods, this uh, new global currency that he proposed that everyone was like, nah, no thanks, we're going to use gold. <laughs> I was like, yeah, super, super timely. Uh, glad I learned about that like three months ago. <laughs> this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to forgive that you're mistaking uh, Bitcoin for Ethereum, but everything else is just coming into place very nicely. You could have done none of those things on Bitcoin. Like if you want Bitcoin to do that job, figure out how to build Uniswap and MakerDAO and Augur and, and synthetics on Bitcoin. It's, not, it's then, too early. Then it can be this, the, the reserve asset. Okay, if it's too early, then stop giving Ethereum people shit because we're building it now. But you're Where's not really... Ethereum going to be? Where's Ethereum going to be when it finally figures out how to do MakerDAO on Bitcoin? Already no, we're not trying to do MakerDAO on Bitcoin. We're trying to make the dollar irrelevant. Which makes yeah, MakerDAO I mean, relevant. This whole thing about, oh, yeah, Bitcoin is going to be stable at some point in time. No, no, it's not. Like, no, you, the world is going to organize differently in the future. Okay. The world is organized differently before in the past. As if that is not some like high in the sky like comment. Okay, whatever. You should oh, be yeah, the sovereign in individual. Years from now, the world's going to reorganize itself and not care about volatility. Volatility is a perspective thing. Like if you look at, you know that U.S. dollar is not stable. It's volatile. It trades against other things. It's just in the U.S. market bubble. In a short period of time, prices appear to be stable, but over time, prices are going up. So it's not actually stable. Um, and I think that volatility will become less prominent in short periods of time. Although volatility will continue because all prices will go down on, against Bitcoin probably forever, which I think makes a lot more the sense because we are getting more efficient as a human race at producing shit. Why is shit getting more expensive other than the fact that the dollar is stably going down in value? Right. The dollar is stable because when the price changes, the Fed does the equal and opposite thing. 
There's no Fed in Bitcoin. Which is why things will be priced appropriately rather than the sure. other way around. Well, no, I mean, it, sure, maybe price appropriately, sure, but not stable. The world would be much better at economic, uh, economic evaluation and stability is not sure. necessary for that. No, and Bitcoin is stable. Stability. It's a stable unit of yeah, measurement no, it's not. for value. No, it's not. It's not. It has. It's you can't redefine the other parts of Bitcoin and, and call that stable and then say that's stable price. You need the price of the thing to be stable. No, that's not true because things are getting cheaper to produce. So if you were pricing them accurately, they should be getting cheaper over time. If they are saying the same price, then Bitcoin's you're going to move with the by money. percentage numbers for the rest of its existence. What are you basing? So that I'm talking of? about like day to day stability, day to day, month to month. People. Why is that important? Like, the majority of the world don't finance live with that. and business. The majority of the world does not live with that. Yeah, but the majority the of the world world's greatest operates. economy, the U.S. dollar economy, does have that. It thrives on the Cantillon effect. It thrives because it can print money. <laughs> It's the greatest country in the world because it's closest to the money printer. You can't, you can't say stability is worth nothing. We don't even have stability. This idea of stability is a fucking lie. It's not a lie. It's, it's a lie and it's becoming even more of a lie. General relativity. Like, okay, the sun, the sun is moving and it's not stable to the rest of the universe, but it's still stable to us and that's what matters. And that's what Bitcoin is, 21 units. Okay, you, there are other ways of stability, which is price stability. <laughs> Why do you want things to be priced the same? So I want I can, things to get cheaper no, over time. Make decisions <laughs> about the future. No, you, you can't make decisions because your underlying measurement is being manipulated to try to keep price stable. Okay, it makes both no of sense. these things are true. Both of these things are true. Like, I understand your perspective. But you're trying to say that your perspective is the only perspective. You have to say that the commitment to pay back the same amount of price later on a loan or whatever is also valuable. Like, cool, we get stability in total numbers of, of Bitcoins, but that's not the kind of, there's other kinds of stability that are valuable, as in the kind of stability that everyone else wants. I don't think everyone else wants that. Okay. Well. I All right. Well, we classic mind. fight night. Classic fight night. <laughs> Great episode. This is fantastic. POV token will also have perfect stability. And in fact, it won't be, it, uh, it'll be have 69 at day one. So it'll be perfectly stable from day one. You guys, it's insta mind, hard money. <laughs> no more will be printed ever. <laughs> Just 69. It's going to supplant <laughs> everything as the unit of account for the world. It's going to be hilarious. We will live in a meme world, all yeah. backed by POV. All backed by POV. Did we just make it a security? No, because no, one's, no one is uh, working towards this. It's yes. the community. It's no, no, instantly no, 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 no. decentralized. POV is the token, and the secure world is backed by the token POV. POV crypto is this stupid podcast that no one listens to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys, you heard it here first. You can follow me at CK underscore snarks. I do not contone POV token. And you can follow the podcast at POV crypto pod. You can follow me at trustless state, both on Twitter and on medium. My favorite tokens are MKR token, ether and POV, which actually has not yet been minted, but I need to go do that. <laughs> per usual living in a fairy tale. Love you all. Fam. <laughs> all right. That's a good one. I'm pausing on that. Good episode. Yeah. Okay. I only mean some of those. I only mean some <laughs> of those things. Oh man. Okay. Oh shit. I'm still recording.